Joining me now is one of the candidates for the Democratic gubernatorial nomination in New Jersey, Assemblyman John Wisniewski. Mr. Assemblyman, welcome back to the show. I think you've been on, but it's been a long time. Yeah, it's been a while, Chuck, but good it, to be back. Thank you. It was. And when last we saw you uh, a lot on the national stage, it had to do with the bridge incident, bridge gate, however you want to call it. Uh, it's an important part of your reintroduction to voters. How much? How much should Bridgegate matter to voters, to Democratic primary voters, when they go to that ballot box and see your name up there? It should matter if voters want to make sure that government is held accountable. The whole exercise of Bridgegate was to make sure that the governor's abuse of power was held accountable. And what the committee did uh, was hold the governor and his administration accountable. And we've seen the proof in the pudding with the actions of the U.S. Attorney's Office. I'm curious, do you think um, sending two people to prison was the right call here, two staffers? Well, they violated the law. Uh, they're appealing that sentence. Uh, but we saw the other extreme of sentencing when the former head of the Port Authority of New York, New Jersey, got sentenced to house arrest at his mansion in South Carolina. I think the public wants to make sure that if there is an abuse of the public trust, that somebody's held accountable for it. I, I, let me ask this in the larger sure. context here about public trust, particularly in the state of New Jersey. Um, obviously, Governor Christie's not very popular, but not I was thinking all. about the last three Democratic governors, and all of them left extraordinarily unpopular, essentially kicked to the curb by voters for one reason or another. You know, one could be ethics issues, one, one could be resigned. Fine. One resigned. I mean, there's, but the point is, it hasn't been a successful bunch going back to 89, to be honest. Why is that? Well, you, you take a look at our most recent Democratic governor. Uh, the Democratic Party thought bringing somebody in from Wall Street was going to be a good idea. And the state of New Jersey quickly realized that bringing somebody in with that skill set is not necessarily a good skill set to govern a state as complex and diverse as New Jersey. And because of that, because of John Corzine's tenure in office, we wound up with Chris Christie as a reaction, as a response mm -hmm. to what John Corzine had done. It's interesting. Obviously, I know you want to link John Corzine, Corzine to your primary opponent. A lot of the financial industry provides a lot of economic activity for the state of New Jersey, particularly in northern New Jersey. Is that not, I mean, is it a total penalty in your mind? If you've got Goldman Sachs experience, you, you don't want to see these people in public service or, or in government? Well, look what's going on in Washington, D.C. We see a federal administration dominated by Goldman Sachs figures. That's not going so well for us. But let's be clear about what I'm talking about, is that in a state as complex and diverse as New Jersey, uh, coming in from Wall Street with a perhaps a stellar record of what you've been able to accomplish on Wall Street doesn't necessarily mean anything about being able to actually govern New Jersey. And I think that's the problem we've seen in the past, and that's potentially the problem we'll have in the future, because the lessons learned on Wall Street are not the lessons about how to govern a state like New Jersey. You've been in Trenton a long time. Can you give me a governor that you think's been pretty good? Well, I'd have to tell you, on both sides of the aisle, we had our temporary governor, Senator Dick Cody. I think he did an extraordinary job based on his legislative experience. But I'll also cross the aisle, because I think that uh, for a Republican governor, Governor Tom Kaine did an extraordinary job being bipartisan in many respects in starting some important initiatives like the Transportation Trust Fund that for decades had funded transportation infrastructure in New Jersey. What a, look, bipartisanship, if you're elected governor, you're likely to have a Democratic legislature, so you're not going to have these issues. It's a, in a blue state, it's probably more of, a, of an issue if, if a Republican gets elected governor. That's right. But is bipartisanship a, a must for you? Do you think it, even if you come in there with large majorities and you succeed, and look, the numbers say that whoever the Democratic nominee is, they're no, going to be right. a heavy favorite. Um, how do you govern in a way that you don't create resentment on the other side, where one party rule doesn't basically become a punishable offense. No party has a monopoly on good ideas. And as governor, I'll respect good ideas wherever they come from. And I think that's the essence of understanding the nature of New Jersey. What's uh, a good Republican idea you've seen out there that you would like to um, currently perhaps right, yeah. right now? Currently, there aren't a lot of good ideas out there from trying to create a Muslim ban on a federal level to trying to take away the Affordable Care Act on a federal level. We've seen countless bad ideas. I'm looking for a good idea. I haven't seen yeah. it yet. It's Chris Christie done governed on any issue in a way that you may emulate. 
No. I mean, look, what Chris Christie did from the very first day in office was set himself up to run for president of the United States. We saw that in his policy choices. We saw that in his appointments. Uh, he was a temporary governor for all intents and purposes because he really had his eye on a bigger prize. And so that's exactly the model that should be avoided in the future. Somebody so not, seeking even, not even one issue he focused on that you might... Well, look, might he's say, focused on a lot of issues. Let's take the opioid crisis. He's focused on the opioid crisis as a Hail Mary pass in the waning days of his administration to try to rehabilitate his reputation. The reality is, is it's a crisis that existed for most of his tenure, but he only came around to understanding it was a crisis right. in the waning days. That's not leadership. Assembly John Wisniewski, I'm going to have to leave it there. Sure, it's a Democratic you. primary. It's coming up very soon, and we'll be watching very closely, and we'll see you again if you get through the primary. Thank you very much. Look forward to it. You got it. Thank you. Stay safe on the trail. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.